Hi there, it's just me again and I thought I'd talk to you a wee bit about being psychic. Um, people ask me all the time, what's it like to be psychic? How do you tune in? How do you access that information? And how do you do it kind of, you know, so quickly? Well, I suppose the truth of it is that, you know, intuition being psychic, as I've said and I always will say, is very natural. Um, however, there are people who are more natural and are more kind of tuned into that than others. And I guess it's kind of like somebody who plays the piano. If I started out now, it'd be very baby steps, but, you know, again, practice makes perfect. And psychics, when they're kind of learning to develop, use all sorts of tools and techniques. One of which um, is my passion, which is the tarot. Um, and by looking at the tarot, the symbolism, um, by looking at the, the kind of... Um, the way that the tarot falls, you know, the placement of it, tells so much about the person, the person's life, you know, and around their, their kind of environment, etc. So that's one, what we call a divination tool. Um, and by using that, you know, you go, you move from one level of consciousness to another. And in doing so, you relax into that natural, intuitive sense. Um, some people use colours. Um, and we can tune into what we call the aura, which is a magnetic energy field that surrounds the, the body um, and that has lots of different colours, shapes and um, different things going on in it. It's your kind of force field. Um, and so when Star Trek and they say the force be with you, well, basically this is your force field. And that's why when you maybe are somewhere and you're, you're not feeling comfortable, it's as if somebody's eyes are born into the back of your head, and you turn around to find somebody watching you, that's because they have kind of entered your zone, your energy. Um, and if you've never felt that energy, a simple way to do it is to rub your hands together and then take them apart just a wee bit and then just kind of keep pushing them in and out, but don't let them touch each other. And you might start to feel like a kind of magnet, a push-pull effect. You might feel heat, you might feel cold, you might feel kind of sparky sensations. And this is because you are working with your own on aura and energy levels. Now, um, when we work with the aura and we sense and we feel that that's what we pick up on. But as a, a psychic or an intuitive, you learn to go much deeper and, you know, find out where aches and pains and, you know, there's more energy, less energy. And also, once you focus in on that, you can find out what's happening in and around your life. So not only is it an energy for healing, it's also a, another form of divination, if you like. Um, and while we're on the, the, the subject of colours, some people use coloured ribbons. Because remembering everything has a vibration. And so different people are drawn to different colours for different reasons. And we can use simple tools like dominoes. Dominoes, numbers. Um, and again, the power of the energy and the, the sensing of what lies behind that. Some people use rune stones. Again, that's the Norse um, and Norse language. Um, and again, tuning into that. There are lots of different ways that we can do this. Some people use playing cards. Um, but basically, it's about training um, the senses to expand. And with that expansion, to grow, to tune in and to understand how the psychic messages or information comes forward to you and then to put it into some form of um, coherent um, a paragraph or sentence or piece of information so that the person can understand it. Um, being psychic is different from the, the spiritual mediumship because spiritual mediumship tunes into a very much higher vibration. We're tuning into their loved ones on the other side, to the energy that they bring forward. And so almost it's kind of like layers and different layers. And different people work um, predominantly better at different levels, the same as we all do, you know. And we all have a kind of maybe a favourite thing that we do or something that is very much ours, if you know what I mean. So um, for, for being psychic, what do you do? How do you develop it? Well, you work with different tools. Um, you build up your experience in the different tools. And in doing that, you build up your energy. You build your senses. And most importantly, you build your trust in the senses and the intuition that you own. It's yours. It's not 
It's not a new thing you're going to get. It's something that you've already had. You came to the earth with it. Sometimes you don't know, and um, maybe you've not used it for a wee while, um, but it's just like a muscle that once you start to work it, it starts to perform better. Um, going to classes or, you know, workshops and things like that um, can help because you work with other people and you get the tools and you're able to practice in a safe and controlled environment and especially working with somebody who knows what they're talking about, who's been doing it for a number of years and who has the experience and the knowledge behind them. Um, so there's no point in doing two classes and running out thinking you can do it all yourself because unfortunately it doesn't work like that. It's taken me over 30 years to gather the skills, the tools and the techniques um, to do the, the work that I do and I'd like to think in doing that I'm hoping, to, you know, and I hope to pass that on to students that come and work at the workshops or people who I, I work with in Skype. So again, I think the, the key words here are practice makes perfect. Um, if it's something that you think that you would like to do or you would like to develop um, or you're not sure if you have questions about it, just drop me a wee private message and if I can answer any questions or tell you about any of the workshops that are happening, um, I'll do that. So thank you very much for watching once again.